I'm Phil Jarvis and I run the farming operations at the Game and Wildlife Conservation Trust Allerton Project. The Allerton Project's objectives are to uh, look at the interaction between wildlife and farming, included agroecological principles, to research them as well and also to disseminate the, the information we get to others. So we're going to talk about some agroecological principles. There are many, they are numerous, but what we're going to concentrate on is those that we do at the Allerton Project in Loddington. So we're going to talk about arable farming and cultivation and rotations. We're going to talk about soil health, reducing inputs. We're going to look at how cover crops, stock and stockless systems with grass can work. And we're going to look at agroforestry and habitat management and how that habitat management can benefit your crop production and the environment. People often ask what an agroecological approach is to farming. Well, if you take conventional farming and food production on one side and perhaps environmental protection and enhancement on the other, what are those farming practices that can meet both objectives? Strong, profitable food production and environmental responsibility. So let's start with food production and how do we go about it on a heavy clay farm in Leicestershire? Well, firstly, growing appropriate crops Secondly, looking at my rotation and looking at the varieties within that rotation. How can I save on certain things? Are they resistant to certain pests and diseases? Uh, and, and I don't need to use as many fungicides. Uh, and what natural processes can help me? So in this particular field, we're doing a cultivation trial as well as, so can I use less diesel, keep more straw, more food on the surface for beetles and farmland birds? Maybe I've got to do a little bit more intervention on certain sides or do I revert back to a plough because I may well have a weed problem and I may well want to restructure my soil if I'm on lighter land, say. So firstly, first and foremost, different ways of growing crops on heavy land in Leicestershire. So we talked about the importance of rotation, so not only crops that are very carbon based like wheat and barley, but those that help with the nitrogen. So carbon and nitrogen cycle is really important for, for growing crops. So this crop of beans here with, uh, with, uh, with roots going down that will nodulate up and fix nitrogen uh, from the soil. It's early in the year, so I mean, but you can see this new growth just beginning to grow at the bottom here. Uh, these will have nodules on them, they'll fix nitrogen. When I harvest the crop, I'll take the bean and this bit will go back into the soil and there'll be a source of nitrogen for the next crop. So one of the other things that's really important, I've just uh, picked up this clod from this bean field and broken it up. And not only is there uh, some be a beetle there, which is uh, part of its diet, may well be a slug, but also in here is, is earthworms as well. And earthworms are improving channels through my soil. They're digesting the organic matter in the top and they're helping do loads of things to help my soil structure. Earthworms are really keen in this agroecological approach. There are underground engineers. They're really an army working on behalf of farmers. That's really important. Earthworms get the thumbs up. This is some of our cover crop here that was left of it. Uh, we've got phacelia in here. Uh, we've got uh, an oil radish. Uh, we've got some volunteer cereals and there's some oats sown in here. And this is all about keeping a cover on the ground the whole time. It's about locking nutrients up in, these, in this plant here. It's about when it is destroyed and we plant the next crop in here, which is gonna be spring beans, that the nutrients that are captured in here and aren't leaching off in, in down our water courses are available for the next crop. So. In an agroecological approach, using things like cover crops, catch crops, companion crops are really important. If sometimes your soil is, uh, makes it a challenge, then introducing grass into your rotation may be an option. So there's lots of ways that we can use uh, rotations and different cropping systems to help us in that approach to try and make sure we look after our soils. So I'm going to talk about glyphosate briefly and how I look to reduce not just glyphosate but a lot of plant protection products, a lot of fertilizers and appropriate use. We have to have much more judicious use of our inputs, we have to be much more selective and we have to try and make sure that uh, the products we use are safe on our farmland. That doesn't mean to say that we shouldn't have the debate about the advantages that certain plant protection products can give to the soil, not to need to plough, to uh, keep uh, insect flora and fauna on the top and be able to reduce our cultivations and our diesel use by drilling straight into it. But not just glyphosate, all our inputs, because for 
not only environmental reasons, but for my pocket, the less I spend on my crop and the more of those processes that can happen, there's more profit in it for me. And we're talking about a margin and a profitability rather than just chasing a yield. Thank you.